Thank you, Steve. Hello, Sue. Hello, everybody. How is it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, as you know, I'm Chef Ben. This is Dinner with Ben, episode 17, and today we are making seafood chowder, and I'm super excited. I've been craving this all day, and it's a nice, cold, rainy day, so this is perfect. Uh, yeah, so we'll give it a couple of minutes for some people to, or some more people to come in, and then we'll get going. So today's episode is actually going to be probably pretty quick because we're only making the one dish, but we're going to do it a little differently than you're probably used to. I'm going to break it down into a few different pieces so we can get the most flavor into the chowder as we possibly can. Uh, and then at the end of the show, we'll do our draw for the beautiful maple Ashworks cutting board, which I don't have with me. Steve and Donna have it, but it will be mailed to the person whose name I draw out of here. Bob says that he's excited to see how I make the chowder. He's read about how I do it. Uh, he's excited to see it. So, Bob, I don't know. Uh, this is probably going to be a little different than what you read. Um, maybe not too much. I mean, I don't change it up that much. But I want to kind of do things a little bit differently today. The main focus of today, because I mean, I'm sure everybody who's watching this knows how to make a chowder. The main focus of today is going to be to get the most flavor as we can into the chowder. Hello Chantel, hello Deanna, thanks for coming. So, <clears throat> like I said, at the, end of the, at the end of the show, we're going to do the draw um, for the Ashworks cutting board. If you made ravioli, which some of you did, and posted a picture, your name is in this little thing, and I will pick one out, and that will be the winner, and then we'll get in touch with you, and you can give us your details, and we'll send you off the beautiful Maple Ashworks cutting board. Uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So like I said, this is going to be a fairly quick episode as opposed to like the last one when we made the ravioli. I think that was like an hour and a half. This one's probably going to be under an hour. So if you're hungry, don't worry. It's going to happen pretty quick. So the first thing we want to do is peel and cook the potatoes. Now, on the ingredients list, I said yellow potatoes. You could use Yukon Golds, which is what these are. You could use uh, fingerling potatoes. You just want something waxy. Yellow waxy potatoes hold their consistency, hold their texture uh, and their shape better uh, when you cook them as opposed to like a white potato, like a russet or something like that. Um, so a waxy potato is actually going to hold together so you don't just get like mushy potato or the potato doesn't just completely break down. Uh, yellow potatoes are also kind of the optimal potato for, um, excuse me, for, I'm brain dead guys, I don't know what's going on, don't blame the weather. Uh, yellow potatoes are also the optimal potato for potato salad because again they hold their shape and it can be Yukon Golds, it can be fingerlings, it can be any variety of waxy potato. Yellow flesh are the best. So we're going to peel these, we're going to dice them up and we're going to cook. We're going to cook them separately from everything else. We're actually going to cook a few things separately uh, and then we're going to put it all together at the end. So we're just going to peel this really quickly. Uh, and if anybody is watching this from Hellbacks, I know that quite a few of you are, uh, and you want to get one of these peelers, I was at Big Eric's today, uh, which is in Burnside, and they just started, like, just kind of started selling more home stuff. It was always just professional stuff. Um, and they have a pile of these peelers. I think they're like seven or eight bucks. So if you want one of these peelers, that's the place to get it. Okay? Just as a heads up. But I think most kitchen supply stores have them. And again, they are my favorite peeler. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to talk and peel some potatoes. So, uh, like I said, we're going to do things a little differently today. What we're going to do is first we're going to cook the potatoes. We're going to dice them up, boil them. Uh, and because they're yellow, like I said, they're going to hold their shape a little better. Um, we're going to cook our mussels. Uh, obviously, the mussels are in the shell. We can put them in the chowder in the shell. Um, which is kind of like a restaurant thing you do for presentation. But we're actually going to cook the mussels and then take them out of the shell. We're going to save the liquid, and that's going to go into the base of our chowder. So really nothing's going to go to waste here except for the shells themselves. Um, yeah, other than that, it's all just flavor. Uh, and those mussels, I, all I did was rinse them in cold water, and we'll get to that more in a bit. Um, you don't want to submerge them in cold water. 
because they're saltwater animals, right? So the fresh water will actually kill them. So, I mean, if you're using them right away, it's not the end of the world. Um, and, I mean, if you're just dumping them in cold water for a second, not the end of the world. But if you're going to leave them in the cold water for like, a couple of minutes, you're just going to kill all the mussels. So, you know, if you submerge them in cold water, cold, fresh water, and you put them in your fridge overnight, by the time you cook them, they've already started de to decompose. And that is absolutely not what you want. So only ever rinse them. Don't ever submerge them. And if you have them in your fridge in ice, make sure, like, because you're trying to store them for a day or two, make sure you have them in a colander so that the liquid can drain off, the melting ice can drain off, and you don't just completely submerge your mussels in fresh water. Because dead mussels are not good mussels. Hello, Laura. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Okay. So those are peeled. I'm just going to dice these up. I don't want them too big. Um, I just kind of want them. Uh, Sue says she saves her lobster shells, um, freezes them, then uses them for a base like the muscle base. That's a great idea. Um, what you can do too is it's really difficult with uh, home equipment, but you can puree that or like break the shells up and after they cook for a while they'll break up a lot easier. That's how you make bisque. That's what bisque is. It's pureed shells, guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, Nastasia, did I say that right? I hope I said that right. Thank you. So, uh, the key here is we just want to dice these all the same size. And I want them fairly small. I don't like it when I just get a spoon and it, all it has on it is potato. I want a little bit of everything. Almost. Sorry, Nastasia. I'm just going to call you A. Kennedy, okay? Sorry, A. Kennedy. Um, so these are, you know, not super big, probably about one centimeter squared, approximately. So, you know, fairly, like about a medium dice, or small dice. And we just want them all even. That's really the key here. And you know, I know I do this a lot, but there's always new people, so I'm going to go over the knife thing as well. So a lot of people have a tendency to hold their knife way back here, like they're running away from the blade. The problem is that you lose control of the knife that way, you have no grip on it. So hold the knife up high. I recommend a pinch between your thumb and your index finger, wrap your fingers around. That'll give you the most grip. And your other fingers are curled back. Not, you're not putting your knuckles down on the board, you're just curling your fingers back and using the flats between your first and second knuckle as a guide for your knife. If that helps. Hi Donna. Okay, so this is going to take a second. No worries. Nastasia. Is that right? Nastasia? I hope that's right. Oh, I should say also, last week when Donna and Steve were here, we realized that I can't actually see everybody who comes on. Um, I only get to see like half the people, so if I don't say hi to you, it's not because I'm not happy you're here. It's just because I can't see that you're here. But thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because we're not friends or, or you're not following me or what it is, but for whatever reason, I can't always see... Donna, I'm glad to hear that. I'd love to hear how it turns out. Donna says she's going to take notes and make the chatter later on. So that's good. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep dicing these potatoes up. If anybody has any questions, this would be a good time. Actually, I have something to ask you guys. If you could all hit the share button, that would be amazing for me. That would help a lot with growing the audience of this show. Uh, and it would mean the world to me. But you don't have to. It's okay if you don't want to. But if you do, it would, it would make me very, very happy. Hey, Ruby. Nice to see you. 
Good, Donna, that's good. She said she bought yellow potatoes. That's exactly right. Wendy says she'd love to be here making buttermilk biscuits. And I thought about doing biscuits today as well. But uh, I've never made uh, gluten-free tea biscuits from scratch. Um, and I didn't really want to get this kitchen all gluteny and then not be able to eat the chowder. So that's why we're not making biscuits tonight. I really did think about it. Um, but because I actually really want to eat this, I thought against it. So that's why no biscuits. But it actually, if anybody has a really good biscuit recipe that you'd like to share with everybody, feel free to post it because I'm sure a lot of people would be happy about that. Nice, Donna says she picked up a really good warm baguette. That sounds delicious. Wendy, thank you. That's really good to know. I'm going to have to try that. Uh, I have gluten-free bread. Uh, sharp gluten-free bread. This stuff's really, really good. That's what I'm going to use to dip my, in my chowder. Okay, so I'm just going to throw these potatoes. They're all about the same size. They're not going to take a really long time to cook. But we want to cook them separately from everything else because, you know, the, the milk is going to you know, curdle by the time the potatoes are cooked. And we don't want all that excess starch in the chowder. We're going to thicken it with a roux, which I'm using gluten-free flour for. Um, and I know somebody out there is going to use cornstarch, I think. Um, yeah, so I just don't want the excess starch. Uh, I just want to cook them separately. Just make sure they're cooked so everything else doesn't overcook, if that makes sense. So I'm first going to rinse them with cold water, just to get off any excess starch. Because they're waxy potatoes, there's, it's not, there's not going to be a lot. And now hot water. Just to cover the potatoes by like an inch, inch and a half, it doesn't need too much. A little bit of salt. And they're good. Okay. What do we say? So, next step is we're actually going to cook our mussels next. So, like I said, the mussels I already rinsed. Um, and I picked some of the beards off them. Just what I could see. And we're just going to go through. So this one, I don't know where you all live. I know that a lot of people out west um, aren't very familiar with seafood. So I think it's important to kind of go over kind of some safety issues with seafood. So this one was open and it closed as I picked it up, which means it's fine. Um, but if you have any that are open, these are fresh mussels. I don't have any. But, if, okay, so we imagine that this mussel is open and we kind of bang it on the side of a bowl or tap it on the counter. Um, and it doesn't close, it means it's dead and we get rid of it. If the shell's broken, get rid of it. Um, you know, you really don't want to play around with mussels or any kind of seafood or shellfish um, or mollusks, which these are. Uh, so if, you know, we were saying in kitchens, when in doubt, throw it out. And I know that there's, you know, a tendency, nobody wants to throw away food, and I get that, but you also don't want food poisoning from a rotten mussel. So, if you tap it and it doesn't close, get rid of it. If the shell's broken, get rid of it, okay? But these all look very, very good, very fresh. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to heat the pan up, which is my frying pan. I'm gonna add a little bit of wine to it, about half of, I think I said a cup of wine. Where did I write that? Yeah, I think I said a cup of wine. Half a cup. So we'll use about a quarter cup of white wine. The rest of the liquid will come out of the mussels. We'll steam them only for about two minutes, just until all the shells open. Because we don't want we don't want to cook them completely. I mean, mussels don't take long to cook anyway. But after they're cooked, they're going in the chowder. We're going to cook some more. Like even if we put them in the chowder at the very last minute, the chowder is going to be hot. It's going to cook the mussels. So we we don't want to fully cook them here. Uh, so I'm just going to turn that on medium. And like I said, I already rinsed these mussels. If um, if you haven't rinsed yours, just take a second and run them under cold water, but don't submerge them. Just run them. If you see any exterior beards, just pull them off, and you'll be good to go. 
Also, I should say that these are one of my favorite foods in the whole world. I almost lit myself on fire when I was three years old trying to get mussels. That's how much I love them. That's a story for another time. Okay. I need a lid because we're going to steam these. So this really is only going to take, you know, two, three minutes. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to wait a sec, wait for the pan to heat up. Uh, after the mussels are cooked, we're going to set them aside, and then we're going to start prepping our onion, carrot, and celery, or our mirepoix, which is the French term for those. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get going on the rest of the stuff. Like I said, this is not going to take very long, but it is going to be very tasty. Now, some other things I have here, which are on the list, is a can of baby clams. And I know a lot of people are probably like, why would you use canned clams? The answer is that uh, fresh can clams, uh, for this type of thing, it's kind of a pain in the ass because you got to do the muscle thing over again. It takes longer to cook. They're really hard to get all the sand out of. So you end up with, with kind of gritty chowder where these ones have already been purged. And the good thing is that these ones come in a can of liquid. So we're going to use the liquid from these as well as this bottle of clam juice uh, to build the flavor into our sauce. Uh, Wendy says, leeks can be interchanged whenever it calls for onions, right? Wendy, it really depends on what you're making. Um, you know, if, like, if something's calling for caramelized onions, you're probably not going to want to use leeks because they're not going to caramelize the same. They don't have the same texture. Um, but generally, you could definitely use leeks in this, 100%. No problem. Uh, Donna says she hates clams, so she's using extra scallops, but she did buy clam juice. Good, that's perfect. Um, and I, like, I know that most people would put sh like shrimp, lobster, or crab, or all three in here, and that's fine. If you want to do that, go for it. I'm definitely allergic to it, so that's why I'm not doing it. But this is your chowder. You put whatever you want in it, right? Like, I'm just kind of trying to show you the basics here. Uh, whoa, there's a lot of comments. What's... Uh, Steve asks, what white wine do I recommend? Whatever you have around. Something dry. You don't want something really sweet. I'm just using this uh, Chilean wine because it's what I usually buy for cooking. And I actually really like the flavor of it. But whatever you want is fine. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, God. I shut my browser. Hold on. Uh, two, two, two. Uh, Sue says she can, she finds canned clams in bits, not whole. These are, uh, these aren't whole clams for sure. They're, they're probably just, well, they're baby clams and they're probably torn up from being taken out of the shell. Uh, yep, yeah, Carol, that's fine. Hello, cat. <laughs> Carol, it's true, there is no white wing. Steve? Get, get it together, man. What are you doing? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is pop about a tablespoon. Oh, that's a little. Tablespoon of butter. Muscles in. Wine. Lid. I let my pan get a little too hot. But that's okay. It's only a little bit smoky in here. So that's not going to take long, especially with how hot that is. I'm going to try to heat down a little bit. Those aren't going to take long at all. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Cassie. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, next step. While those are cooking, we're going to get some veg prepped. So first things first, we're going to take the top of the onion off just the top. We're going to throw onion peels on our floor. We're going to cut it in half down through the center, leaving the center in or the root intact. And then we're going to peel. Peel, peel, peel. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Don't do this. What I'm doing is a terrible idea. If your knife slips, you're going to cut yourself. But Sometimes it's got to live dangerously, guys. Sometimes. 
Okay. Onions peeled. I'm gonna peel some carrot. Twenty more seconds on that. I'll give us time to peel our carrots. Okay, so I'm just gonna peel these very, very quickly. I think I said one carrot, but these carrots are tiny, so I'm using two. I just dropped everybody's name on the floor. I just smelled like something was a little off, but I don't think it is. I think it's just my nose. Mm. Steve, I think you're right. I do need a sous chef. Sue, so you are sous chef. That is true. Okay, so the mussels are just here. They're still in their broth. That's fine. So we're just going to let those cool, and then we'll pick them. So, next step, veg. So again, I know most of you know this, but I know that there's some newer people here as well, so I'm going to go over this again. Also, let me know if the video is kind of choppy because it is on my computer. Don't know if it is on yours. Mm. So, onion. What we're going to do, hold our hands very, very flat. Hold our knife flat. Not putting any pressure down on the end. We're just holding it in place. We're making... A couple incisions. Now I'm pointing the root of the onion away from me. And I'm going to use the tip of my knife and I'm going to cut down, but I'm not cutting through the root. I'm keeping the onion intact. Okay? So then when I pick it up, it's still all together. So then as I rotate it and cut it, it's perfectly evenly diced. Now this for some, for some people, it's going to take a few minutes or a few tries to get your head around this, and that's fine. But once you get it, you'll never dice an onion another way. Um, and I know some people just go in and kind of chop, 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 but then your onion is all different sizes, the pieces are mismatched, and they don't cook evenly. So then you're going to get a little bit of raw onion, some overcooked onion, some burned onion. You really want everything even. That's really the key here. And once you get to the end and you're not sure what to do, just flatten it and then cut it some more so that everything is still nice and even. And then that is the only waste you have, the root there. That's, that's okay. I mean, if you don't cut onions like this, it's fine. But I recommend trying it and kind of learning it because A, there's a lot less waste, and B, the onions are all even sized. So Okay, so I'm just going to take this pot and I'm going to turn it on a medium heat. I'm going to add a bit of olive oil. And we're going to add the onions in. Now, generally, we say always heat the pan. But what we're, like preheat the pan, but what we're doing is actually called sweating. We want to sweat the vegetables. We're not trying to color the onions or anything like that. What we're trying to do is draw moisture out of the veg. And the best way to do that is start on a low temp and work your way up. So that's what we're going to do. So, onions in a cold pan. We'll get the carrots in as soon as we can. And then we'll add the celery. And we're just going to let that cook. 
probably going to take about 10 minutes. And we're really all we're doing is softening the vegetables and drawing moisture out. And that moisture is going to make that first layer of our sauce. Because it's the, it's the juice from the onions and the celery and the carrot. And that's what's going to start building your chowder. Uh, so you can use butter for this if you want. Yeah, that's not a problem. So same thing with the onions. We want our carrots all about the same size. And the key is just to cut into manageable size pieces. You don't want to try and cut this. Cut into manageable size pieces. Cut them into even size pieces. I'm going to cut this in thirds. It doesn't like, I mean, something slightly smaller. They're not, they're not all going to be the same shape. That's fine. It's a carrot. You're not going to square it off and waste half the carrot. Um, but just try and get them as even as possible. That's really what's important. And if anybody's cooking along and they need me to slow down, please don't hesitate to ask me to slow down. I don't mind. Okay, carrots in. Now celery, I already washed this. Very funny, very funny Steve, I like it. Okay. So, like I said, that's going to take a little while. So I'm just going to make sure the whole bottom of the pan is covered. We're going to let that go. Our potatoes are boiling, let's just go to the check. Because they're so small, they're not going to take long to cook, and they're done. So that's perfect. So I'm just going to drain them off. the lid off that pot because I don't really care if they cool down but I do care if they just sit there and steam because they're just going to keep cooking. So we want them to dry out, we want them to cool down so they're not cooking anymore. Okay. Am I, am I cutting out or is that just... So right now it smells like delicious onions, carrot, and celery. Uh, let me know if I'm cutting out or if there's noise or something. You're all, I'm all good? Cool. Sorry, Wendy, it might be on your end there. I hope. I don't know. Now, what we're going to do is once... We've sweated these vegetables. We're going to add uh, our butter, so two tablespoons of butter, and then we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. And we're going to make our roux right in the pot with the veg, and then we'll deglaze first with the wine. And then, I mean, there's not much wine to add, but we'll, we'll add that, reduce that till it's almost gone. Then we'll add the clam juice, we'll reduce that till it's almost gone, 
and then we'll add the second clam juice, and then that'll be, we'll evaporate that until it's almost gone. So that's going to get really nice and thick, then we can add our milk, we'll bring that up, heat it up, and then we'll start adding our seafood. Um, we're going to sear the scallops, we're going to cook them in a pan so we can get a nice color on them, and that's going to add a bit of, bit of extra sweetness, a little extra flavor, and we'll chop them up, put them in the chowder. I don't like boiled scallops, so we're not going to, uh, <laughs> so we're not going to just add the scallops in, we're going to cook them first. So this is sweated, I can't really show you, yeah I can't really show you, but just imagine that it's kind of like a uh, Creamy is a weird word to use, but it's kind of like that, that color, like it's cloudy, it's a thick liquid. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is about two tablespoons of butter in here. Let that melt down. Now, even if you've already started with butter, Sue, um, still add the other two tablespoons because you're going to need that little bit of extra fat to make the roux, okay? okay? So we just want that butter to melt, and then once that's melted, we'll sprinkle in our flour. If you're using cornstarch, which I know somebody out there is or mentioned, uh, mix the cornstarch with water and then add it. Don't worry about the steps. And you won't add that until much later. So with your veg, you're not looking for any color on it. You just want the onions to be translucent. Uh, you want the carrots to be soft. The celery is going to take a while anyway, so don't worry about that. Okay, butter's melted. The two tablespoons of flour. You're gonna add a little bit. So now we're just going to stir that in. And it's going to get really pasty, it's going to stick to the bottom, it's okay, because we're going to deglaze with that white wine really, really soon. So once we're sure all the flour is mixed with the butter and there's no lumps or anything, then we'll add our wine. And that will be now. So cool trick with wine, there's not really enough water or wine in this bottle to do it, but if you want to drain it really, really quickly, spin it, and then it'll create that vortex and it'll empty really, really quick. Okay, so like I said, there wasn't much wine in there, so it did not take long to evaporate. So clam juice, going in. going to move this pot back here and we're going to cook off some scallops. So I have these scallops. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with scallops, which is very possible, Sue says she drank her wine. Uh, so scallops often will have this little bit here. It's a joiner muscle. Uh, it's what connects to the shell. Or I think it actually is what helps open the shell. I'm not sure. Or this is what helps open it. I don't know what it is, but you don't want to eat it. Okay, so look at your scallops. And if they have these little guys, take them off. Because they're chewy. They don't really cook down. Uh, most of these are good, though. So we're just going to take that and we're going to discard it. It's not good to eat. Next up. We're going to take a bit of paper towel. And we're going to dry our scallops off. The drier the scallop is on the surface, the better the sear we're going to get. What is that noise? I think my wife's making noise, Suze. She's going to be mad at me, I think. Oh, 
Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm just patting these dry. I'm going to turn this pan up a bit. And then we're just going to season them very lightly with salt and pepper. So because we have the roux in here, this is already getting thick. So I'm actually going to pop this can open too. And I'm going to put the liquid, not the clams, just the liquid into the pot. Uh, Steve, I don't see why you couldn't give it to your cat. I'm not going to give it to, to my cat. She only, she only eats the best of foods. You know that. So, so scallop or clam juice in. Uh, and these clams are already cooked, so we're not going to add them until the very, very, very last minute. Because they're so small, and they'll cook very, very quickly. Okay, a little salt and pepper on here. We want our pan to get nice and hot, but not, not too hot. We don't want to burn the scallops. But it is smoking, so I'd say it's fine. I'm using olive oil. Generally for this I would use canola oil because of the temperature. I just don't happen to have any right now. So we're just going to take them and place them down. If you drop them, the oil is going to splash up on you and it's going to burn you. So just place them. So what you'll see when you're doing this is right around the edge of the scallop, you'll see it start to brown. That's how you know when it's time to flip it. Um, because we're adding these into the chowder, we're not worried about cooking them through. And generally, I like a little bit of opaqueness in the center of my scallop anyway. So we're just going to take them. With a spoon, it's the easiest thing to do. And then we're just going to flip them. And that's that sear on them. Beautiful, right? That's what we're looking for. And now we're just going to leave those for about another 45 seconds, and then they're done. And I'm just going to turn the heat off so there's enough residual heat in the pan there. And now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but that's what my chowder is looking like. It's getting nice and thick. Perfect. So now I'm going to add the milk. I'm using a whole milk oil. The counter is so. Using a whole milk. If you use anything less than this, like 2% or skim, it's probably going to split because it doesn't have a high enough fat content. Uh, you can use whipping cream if you want. Uh, it's really delicious, but you probably won't feel good afterwards. Um, but you don't want to use anything less than whole milk for this. Okay? So here we have these beautiful scallops and just a touch undercooked, but that's perfect. Uh, yeah, so again, we're not using cream, which you absolutely can, um, but I find when I just when I only use whipping cream, 
feel pretty gross afterwards because it's really, really heavy. Uh, you could use a combination for sure. And I mean, if you want to use just whipping cream, knock yourself out. Uh, but it's my preference to use a homogenized milk and thicken it with a roux and you actually get a lighter, kind of more pleasant experience when you eat it. Swoosh doesn't work on cartons, eh? I don't understand. Sorry. Okay, so we're just going to heat this up. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. I'm just going to let that cook. Now we're going to pick our mussels. And I have this haddock back here. I said two fillets. This one's really big, so I'm only going to use one. Uh, that's the only thing that's actually going to get cooked in the chowder, but we're going to wait for it to heat up before we add it in there. Okay? So, in the meantime, we're going to pick all of our mussels. And if you have to eat a few just to check and make sure they're good, go for it. Because they are delicious. Uh, Bob... I do use, oh, no swoosh for the, I understand, no. Doesn't work for the cartons. Uh, Bob, I do use Old Bay, uh, but not in chowder. Um, not in cream chowders, I should say. Sometimes I'll make like a spicy, that's a beautiful muscle. Sometimes I'll make like a spicy tomato based seafood chowder. And for that, I do use Old Bay, but not in cream chowders. Um, I also really like Old Bay on burgers. It's really good. So we're just picking these. Trying not to eat them all before, before they go in the chowder. Again, if you have any broken shells, like that one I just touched and it broke, don't use it. Just get rid of it. Or if there's any that you really have to pry open, probably don't want to use those ones either. Okay, so I have all this liquid in here. We're going to use it, but there's like grit and sand in it. So, yeah. Yeah, Wendy, that is correct. The uh, tomato-based chowders are generally called Manhattan chowders. Uh, but it's more, I'd say they're more closely related to like a French Puglia base would be more accurate. Not that, not for you, but I mean just in terms of what we call it culinarily. Um, it's more, I mean, it's really hard to define what exactly a chowder is. Because, I mean, a chowder could be a stew, it could be like anything. Um, they just, they call it chowder for whatever reason, so that's what I choose to call it as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I have a very fine mesh strainer. I'm going to pour this liquid through it. Done. Okay. And you don't have one of those, a coffee filter will work or anything like that. So. Just stir this. So we don't necessarily want this to boil. We just want it to be nice and hot before we add our haddock in here. And in the meantime, I'm gonna add just a pinch of dried tarragon. Just the tiniest little pinch. Like, like about that much. Okay, so I'd say about half, a, about a quarter teaspoon is what you're looking for. I'm just gonna put that right in there. And it's not, it, you're going to taste it, but it's, it's not going to be really overpowering. That's the issue with tarragon is if you use even a little bit too much, all you're going to taste is that anise flavor. Um, so just a pinch in something like this just adds that little bit of, you know, je ne sais quoi at the end of the, of the, of the palate. And it's just, it's really, really nice. And Steve said earlier that this was an award-winning chowder. Um, Last year, I won People's Choice at the Chowder Cook-Off and Devour with a chowder very, very similar to this. It wasn't exactly the same, but it was pretty close. So this is almost an award-winning chowder. Um, what you'll notice is that your roux may start to stick to the bottom, so just scrape that off. You don't want it to burn. 
And if it's sticking to the bottom, it's not thickening your chowder, right? Yes. Okay, so this is getting nice and hot. So I'm going to take my haddock. I'm going to dice it up really quickly. Not too small. Like I want fair sized chunks haddock in here. But I also don't want like a whole fillet, right? And once we put this in there, we don't really want to stir the chowder too much because it's just going to break all the haddock up. So I'll set that aside. on our board so we don't get raw fish all over everything else. Give this one more little stir. Now had it goes. Okay, next step. We're going to actually dice, not dice, we're going to cut these scallops. So first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half, and I'm going to eat a piece. This is a really good, this is a really good scallop. So I cut it in half and then cut it in quarters. Now, if you have um, base scallops, like the really small ones, you don't really need to do this. And I probably wouldn't even sear those first. I would just put them right in. But because we have these beautiful, you know, sea scallops, I want to cut them up. Or I want to sear them, and then I want to cut them up. And then we have some liquid on this plate that is just like juice that came out of the scallops as they rested and as they cooled. Now, we don't want to waste that, right? Because that's just pure scallop flavor. So we're just going to dump that right into our chowder. It's the same thing like if you're, you know, if you're making a steak or, or turkey or whatever and you let it rest and then there's juice on the bottom, add that into your sauce. That's pure flavor. Don't throw it out. You're just, you're just losing all this beautiful meat or fish or turkey flavor, right? This is boiling. I'm actually going to turn it down a little bit. If it boils too much, you run the risk of splitting your milk, which you don't want to do. So I'm just going to turn that down. Uh, that is actually Brenda's water dish. That's her cat. A, her name is Brenda, and B, she has a water fountain. So if you're hearing that, I am sorry. I can unplug it if it's bugging you guys. Spread. I feel like the audio is picking up things a little extra today. It seems a little more sensitive than usual. Yeah. Our cat is spoiled. So it's not going to take long for the haddock to cook at all. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually add the scallops in with the mussels because they'll go in at the same time. I'm going to clean my board up. I'm going to chop some parsley. And parsley is going to go in at the very, very end. So okay, I'm gonna. I have a second here while I'm waiting for that. So we got our cat from the pound. We don't really know her backstory, um, but we got her from the pound. And she always batted her water around and made a big mess. 
And then she had some bladder problems. It was a big thing. So we actually got her this water fountain. And then she came back from the vet. And she drank for like five minutes straight. So I'm assuming in her old house she had something similar. So she's used to the water moving. So that's why she was always batting her water around. So she drinks way more water now. She hasn't had a bladder infection since we got it. So that's... That's all that really matters. She's happy. And happy. Okay. So, I already washed this parsley. It's clean. So I'm just going to chop it up. So, secret with herbs is boil them up. Uh, secret with some herbs. Like parsley, cilantro. Um, you want to boil them up. If, if it's sage, you don't want to do that. Sage will bruise and it'll get really bitter. Uh, hearty green herbs like this, you don't have to worry about so much. between curly and flat parsley uh, a little bit uh, in the flavor uh, obviously the texture but I actually prefer curly parsley uh, I know a lot of chefs prefer flat leaf um, yeah really I mean there is a, a slight difference in flavor but it's 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 marginal yeah so I mean I would, I would suggest kind of getting both tasting them and see what one you like best that's what I would say Pretty much cooked. So we're gonna give this a taste. Ooh, 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 that's real good. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt, just a touch more pepper. Guys. Nice. So there's one more thing I'm going to add that I didn't mention. This is the tiniest, tiniest little squeeze of lemon juice. Now I know, I know that it seems weird to add citrus to this, but this tiny little bit, tiny, tiny little bit of lemon juice is actually going to brighten up the flavors. And really, like, kind of bring that the seafood flavor to the forefront. So now, I'm going to stir that in. And give it a little taste again. That's beautiful. That's really, really, really good. That's really good. So, I'm going to add the potatoes in. We're going to add scallops and mussels in there. We're going to add parsley. Then we're going to let that go for a second because we want the potatoes and the mussels and the scallops to heat through. We don't, we're not really looking to cook them, but we want them to heat through. If we um, if we add these baby clams right now, they're going to be rubber by the time everything else heats through, right? So I'm just going to give that probably two, three minutes, and then we'll have the baby clams, and then we're done, guys. That's it. That's, that's the end of the story. That was a quick episode. It hasn't even been an hour, and we're only looking at like another two minutes. Oh, guys, that looks amazing. Does anybody have any questions? before we... Oh, actually, you know what? Now is a good time. Yeah. So, if you watched last week, uh, Steve and I and Donna, we made homemade ravioli and we had a challenge where, you know, if you make the ravioli, take a picture of it, post it on my feed and tag Ashworks in it, you 
We're entered into a draw to win a beautiful Ashworks maple cutting board. Now, uh, only there wasn't that many people who who made the ravioli, and that's fine. It more honestly more than I expected. Um, but everybody's name, everybody who did make the ravioli and posted a picture, their name is in here twice. So everybody has two chances to win. Now, whoever's name I pick, uh, we will send them the cutting board. So uh, myself or the team from Ashworks, we're going to contact you. We'll get you your address, and we will send the board ASAP. So without further ado, let's see who's getting a free cutting board. Uh, I got a name. What does it say? Vincent Chow. Vincent Chow, you are the winner. So we will get in contact with you. Uh, yes. Also, I can say that your raviolis were beautiful and really were gorgeous. Uh, Vincent, we will get a phone number from you. We'll send you a message uh, and get all the contact info we need. Okay. Thank you to everybody who took part. All the raviolis looked really, really delicious. Um, and it means the world to me and I'm sure the Ashworks team as well that you guys... You know, actually put the effort in and, and made the chatters. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, this stuff should pretty much be heated through. Gonna add our baby clams right at the end here. Guys, guys, it's time. It's happening. bring this over here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I hope that you can. I'm very excited for this. Guys, look at that. Look how much stuff is in there. That is beautiful. Guys, here we have our beautiful seafood chowder. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to make this at home or if you made it along, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I always answer them as quickly as I can. Um, thank you to Ashworks and T North for sponsoring the show. And thank you to all of you for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. Next week, we will be learning to butcher a whole chicken, and we'll be making the French classic Coq au vin, which I'm really excited for. I'm really excited to show you guys how to butcher a chicken. It's so much easier than you think it is, and it's way cheaper to buy a whole chicken than the pieces, right? So, I mean, you get a whole chicken for the price of two chicken breasts, and on the chicken there are two breasts, two legs, some wings, whatever you want. Okay, so, like I said, next week we'll be making Coco Vin and learning to take apart a whole chicken. Um, and then, actually, I should say too, after next week we're going to jump into some Christmas stuff. So for the month of December, there's only three episodes in December. I'm going to take uh, the last week off. So, yeah, I think we only have four episodes left before the end of the year. Um, and in December we're going to do some different things. So we're going to do one episode where it's like entertaining, where we're going to make like some hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that to get you ready for the Christmas season. That is the episode after next week. Uh, then we're going to do some Christmas baking, which is not my favorite thing to do, but I think it's important to show you guys and it will all be gluten-y. So I won't actually get to eat any of it, but you guys will learn some stuff. I'm going to show you some of my family classics. Uh, and then on the last episode before Christmas, we're going to do Christmas brunch which I think is going to be really cool. We're going to do a big brunch. So stay tuned for that stuff. Again, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, please like and share this video. It would mean the world to me. And I'll be back next Monday with another fantastic episode of Dinner with Ben. And again, Coco Van. Thank you again to Ashworks, to T-North, and a thank you to all of you, and to Vincent Chow 